everybody, this is Spooky Bjorn, and I am back with a new tutorial. Um, nobody really asked for it, I just thought it would be a good idea. So, um, yeah, this is just a tutorial to give you guys some, not really a tutorial, more of like just uh, a video with some tips and tricks on how to kind of get started making your own little fantasy creatures. So one of the first things that I do when I want to design some sort of new creature is I want to think about what sort of animals I kind of want it to look like. Um, for my style, I mean, I guess a lot of people when they design fantasy creatures, they just kind of make something that kind of looks similar to what they already know in real life, and then they kind of add and take away from it until it's something new. So um, for this example, I decided to kind of take a lynx, an otter, and like a unicorn, which I know is already a fantasy creature, but um, I just kind of combined them all together to make this cute little creature. Um, and you know, fantasy creatures don't always have to be like these big, elaborate, like, dragon, demon, bull things. You know, sometimes like a fantasy creature can just be, um, you know, a cute little tiny thing that forges around in the forest or something like that. So for this uh, video, I'm going to stick with a smaller sort of fantasy creature. I'll probably be making uh, another video in the future that will deal with something bigger like dragons or something like that. So as I'm sketching out this design, you should be able to see where I've sort of incorporated each part of those animals that I've mentioned to create this new creature. It has, you know, the face shape and the paws of a cat. It has the general, <clears throat> excuse me, it has the general, you know, life long noodly kind of body that an otter has um as well as like you know kind of like the opposable thumbs um its ears are kind of like a mixture between like i'd say like a cat and an otter i know some cats like the big cats have rounded ears but i guess that's more like otter ears um you can see that it has obviously the unicorn horn and then its tail is kind of like long and wispy like a horse tail um, for the tail, that honestly probably wouldn't have much of a use other than the fact I think it looks cool, but I mean, the horn could definitely have a use just so it could defend itself. It, probably just more for just like a defense so it could run away from a predator. It doesn't really look like a creature that's too inclined to fight anything. I'd say it's probably uh, maybe like tw twice the size of a house cat. It's not huge, but it's not like super, super tiny. You know, when you're looking at a creature like this, you'd think it'd be something that gen generally, you know, eats like clams and bugs and sometimes plants and stuff. Nothing too big. Okay, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about how to go about doing a color scheme. Um, or at least, you know, the color scheme for this creature that I was creating. And even though it's, you know, a fantasy made-up creature, I'm going to try to give it more natural, like a more natural color palette so it looks like it's more believable. And that's not to say that, you know, like, making, like, a pink and purple version of this wouldn't be plausible. I mean, uh, fantasy creatures can, you know, be any sort of colors that you want, basically. But um, just for this design, I feel like it would make more sense to have it look a little bit more naturalistic. So the colors I chose were basically, you know, the, um, the light brownish yellow color, the cream, the light pink, orange, and then the dark um, gray. But the gray has more brown tones to it to fit in with the rest of it. But um, yeah, I chose to keep the color palette kind of similar to the lynx aspect of this creature. Um, it kind of, you know, made sense to have the white, the kind of cream around the mouth, down along the belly, and on the paws. And I'm just using um, like a watercolor brush with like a size jitter and a little scatter to kind of make it look kind of like the colors spreading out across the fur more, make it look a little bit more natural. Um, Gave it a little toe beans pink because I mean I just thought it looked cute honestly, and um, but yeah those are the basic colors that I chose to fill it out. Um, I had the brown kind of gradating from the tail just because I thought it'd be a little interesting to look at, and um, I'm also incorporating the same like gray brown that's in the horn and the tail into its markings, and when I was doing the markings I kind of did a mixture between like a lynx, a cheetah, and a tiger actually. Um, I know it kind of sounds maybe like an odd mix, but I just thought it looked good for this design. It made it a little bit more interesting. Um, you know, you don't have to, like, stick with one certain type of markings. You could even do zebra stripes if you wanted and you thought it looked good. So, yeah, I can't really think of anything else to talk about for this. Um, overall, it's kind of a simple advice slash tutorial video. 
Um, you know, I guess just keep in mind that when you want to design a fantasy creature, um, what sort of animals from real life that you want to inspire the creature, you know, with um, its body build and its colors. And, you know, keep in mind the function it would have for the environment that the character is existing in. Um, these are, I hope that these are all helpful tips at least. And, um, yeah, that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Um, feel free to comment below with any suggestions. And hopefully I will have a part two to this video in the next week or so that will deal with more, less cutesy fantasy creatures, something bigger and more powerful. And, you know, maybe a little bit more liberty with a design and color scheme and everything like that. So yeah, thanks again for watching and goodbye.